Hello, how are you doing? So listen, um, I've got to let you know what has been going on with me. So March's fitness challenge did not complete, but it was a choice that I made. So in the vlog 52, you will see the point where the indoor rowing stopped at 573 meters. And the reason behind that was um, the pain level that I was experiencing. So tendonitis in my left arm, which I've talked about lots of my videos, um, and it got to the point where um, the sensation was uh, that painful. I thought to myself, I'm gonna continue. If I continue with this, I'm gonna do some real, real damage. And the truth is, I probably had that tendonitis feeling for the best part of four to six weeks retrospectively when I actually look back on my performance and the things I was doing. And I think it came about. So if you think about it now, so when I did the 100,000 pull-ups in 2023 personal challenge project, the last 42,000 pull-ups, uh, where it was a thousand pull-ups each session, um, I was doing those on the techno gym uh, bar but I went to the widest grip the widest point and it was on an angled bar so I've since transitioned from the angled bar and I've gone to the straight bar and that's where for March's challenge I was doing the weighted pull-ups and I was doing the weighted ring steps and I think I, I, I'm not saying this is everything but I think that transition from doing literally thousands of pull-ups on the angled bar, super wide grip, to go into the straight bar. I think that transition has got something to do with that shift. I'm sure there's other things in there as well, but it's something to do with that. Also, for Match of Challenge, I introduced the indoor rowing. Now that's a movement that doesn't feature in my training programs, so this is new to me. So if you've been following this vlog series so far, you'll know that March's Challenge, I was introducing something new. So it's possible that there was some repetitive strain from that, but I'm not sure, I don't know whether the motion of doing the indoor rowing has inflamed and stimulated the ligaments and the tendons, and it's just got to the point where it's too much. Um, so the pain level was very, very high. Um, now, here's the thing with me, okay. Um, I have a tendency to push through those pain barriers, almost mask over them, which is not a good thing because fitness challenges like March's fitness challenge, February's fitness challenge, January's fitness challenge, the 100,000 pull-ups in 2023 challenge, the 50,000 pull-ups in 2022 challenge, challenges like this, they're not going away. I'm going to keep doing more of these challenges because I enjoy it. I enjoy endurance training. I enjoy pushing myself. Um, so I have to think about the long term and I made a choice um, Friday the 22nd of March was the last training session for March's challenge and I called it and I knew at that point I had to say listen if I continue with this right now it's only going to get worse it won't get any better and at what point do I stop so I had to make a judgment call and it was my choice. And of course, at the time, I felt frustrated. Um, I felt um, I felt angry, uh, I felt disappointment. Um, I felt underwhelmed. So underwhelmed with lots of different feelings. Um, there was a myriad of different emotions and thoughts going on. Um, and I think one of the hardest things was accepting the fact that I decided to stop training. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on to that. So from Friday the 22nd of March so uh, to, to Monday the 15th of April, um, during that period, what I've actually been doing is my levels of physical activity have been daily walks, so daily walks around the city, um, and water therapy hydrotherapy so this has been really interesting for me and i've enjoyed it so literally in the pool um walking lengths of the pool um 
and swaying my arms, but using it as in motion. So imagine keeping your left arm and your right arm straight in the water, and then lifting it out of the water. So using that resistance. So I could really just strengthen and feel what was going on, get some movement. Also going under the water in a uh, seated position <coughs> or, a, or a standing position, a bit of a squat um, and just doing um, different types of motions against the side of the pool. Uh, so lots of different stretch work as well as swimming itself and using the jacuzzi, getting the jets on my elbow and just stimulating the nerves, the ligaments, the tendons, getting that blood flow going. That is literally what I've done because tendons or tendonitis, which is what I've got, in my experience, and I'm, and I'm open to people sharing their experience, but in my experience, the best thing for me to do is to just let that rest because it's different than with, with muscles in terms of uh, the recovery process, in my experience anyway. So that's been the tough part and that's been the mental part, the mental game, the mental challenges. Because for me, routine is a big part of my life, is a huge part. Daily routines, things that I practice and do on a regular basis, on a daily basis things that make up uh, my life that are very very important so training is a big part of my life having that process going to that destination training those movements that movement doing that thing so when that's not there i'm missing out on that i'm missing out on that process that that routine that pattern but i'm also missing out on amazing hormones that are getting released in the body <clears throat> so you'll know this yourself when you perform a physical exercise certain types of physical exercise resistance training in particular you get some incredible hormones that are released in the body some incredible hormones and I'm not getting that release or I wasn't getting that release of those hormones so I would I would say looking back retrospectively um, I'd say my dopamine probably spiked it's almost like I was searching for that thing that interaction that something to satisfy that dopamine um, which is quick wins for me um, not that I do this but think about it like that it's like scrolling through your phone it's it's like your brain is searching for those dopamine fixes those quick hits those exciting feelings um, serotonin and oxytocin <laughs> They're two incredible hormones. Now, oxytocin is, uh, I think it's known as, as the love hormone, but essentially this hormone, you know, you can, you can release oxytocin by, uh, through, through touch. So you could like hug somebody, for example, um, and feel that connection with a, with a close uh, family member, friend, whatever, someone that you care about and have that genuine connection. So you can release oxytocin that way. Lots of different ways to do that. Um, serotonin that is the happy hormone the happy mood hormone that's the thing uh, that's the bit that's it's almost like the mood stabilizer that's the bit that is uh, kind of consistent um, and that's the one that we want to tap into and I would say all those three took a big hit because a lot of those hormones as well as other types of hormones are released during physical exercise but when I'm doing high volumes of physical exercise for quite some time i'm getting big rushes of this stuff and i've got the interactions with the people that i know at the training facility so i've got that human interaction that human connection and then i'm either listening to my favorite music so I'm getting stimulated from that aspect or i'm reading my audible books my audio books my blinks audible whatever it may be podcasts all that sort of stuff uh, and i'm getting knowledge so I'm reading non-fiction books and I'm getting high levels of mental stimulation whilst also performing high levels of physical training, whether it's high volumes of pull-ups, rings, dips, whatever it is, that's gone. So that's not there. And it's a big, it is a big thing to, you sort of feel that thing 
it's like a big void that's gone um and of course day one goes by no training day two goes by no training day seven goes by no training in the way that i would normally train and during this process my body my physiology will naturally change things that i noticed number one my eating remained the same so i was eating quite high calories um, and I continue with that. I craved sugary foods. Um, I definitely started to overeat. Um, and I ate at times when I don't necessarily believe that I was hungry. I think it was just comfort, comfort food. Um, and I definitely say the longer I went through the stages, so as the weeks went by and the days went by, um, I felt it more and without a shadow of a doubt it definitely impacted me i felt like i became more introvert um i didn't feel as confident at times um in certain situations um a lot of the interactions that i had with people of course that know me from all walks of life different aspects would be how's the training going phil because of course it's a big part of who i am so i would naturally fill them in on the scenario and depending on who I was talking to, we would delve into the detail or we'll be like, no problem, you'll pass through it, you'll get through this, all that sort of stuff. But I was continuously talking about the fact that I'd not been training. Um, and because I've been here before, because I've had those moments before where I've been in rest and recovery for lots of different reasons, uh, through injury, through illness, all that sort of stuff it still doesn't take away the fact that I always say I feel like I'm as good as the last time that I trained. It's just that thing because when I've been to that point and I've been at that peak performance and then all of a sudden it's not there, I know that once that drops, I've got to build myself back up. And it's knowing that process, I'm going to have to be on that process, which is where I am now. Um. I'd say that this is a very common thing in my experience. So I've been talk I've been having lots of different conversations with people about what's been going on with me, how I've just started to kick start back into my training. And I've listened to people's shared stories of what it's like, you know, to start the gym for the first time, start training for the first time, right through to having uh, injury, illness, or just not training for whatever reason, whether you've not been feeling it, not been feeling yourself, whatever it may be, going on holiday, whatever it is, where you've had that downtime, and it's that bit, it's that bit, it's, it's getting back into it, it's starting, it's starting up that training again, starting up that fitness again, getting back to the person that I know that I am, challenging myself mentally and physically, and talking to different people, uh, runners that have been injured um, and not been able to run um, you know people have said they found it difficult to uh, uh, to sort of find something to do and I think when I've had more detailed conversations with people what they're what they're getting at is is once you do something and that's your thing and you enjoy it and you sink into enjoyment and you know why you're doing that physical activity when it's not there, you miss it and you crave it. And invariably that void will get filled with something else or a series of different things, but it's getting back to that. So right now where I'm at is I am slowly integrating my uh, recovery training plan into play. I would love to get back on that bar, slap on uh, the weights, and start doing weighted pull-ups, high volume, and all that sort of stuff. But that will not happen. I will be going back to basics. I will be spending large amounts of time in stretch work, focusing on the smaller muscle groups, the ligaments, the tendons, isometric holds, plyometrics. Um, I will be using resistance bands, um, and I will be doing lots of um, techniques like hanging bar, or dead hangs as they know. So hanging from the pull-up bar, focusing on that grip, but really trying to squeeze and, and activate those ligaments and tendons. So keeping the arm uh, as straight as it can be, and then focusing on scapular raises. 
but I'm going to do different techniques. So pronated grip, thumbs over, uh, hanging bar, so the dead hangs. I'm going to do neutral grip, or commando grip as it's known, um, hanging bar. And I'm going to do uh, scapular raises, pronated grip, thumbs over, and um, neutral grip also for the scapular raises. And I'm going to introduce push-ups as well. This might sound strange, but having that opposing blood flow from doing that exercise, I've always found it a really nice condition exercise, particularly when I'm doing large volumes of pull-ups. And it does seem to help me with, um, with tendonitis. It, it does because I've had it before in the past. I've not had it as bad as this, but I've had it before in the past. And in my experience, when I've done large volumes of pull-ups, say, um, say a thousand pull-ups in a session, uh, one day, then the next day, and then the day after that, I always incorporate some push-ups afterwards just to activate and it works. So I've got certain processes and techniques that I'm going to implement. Some of it might not work. Some of it will work. Some of it will be experimentation um, and I'll be doing lots of different stretch work. Some of those movements will be yoga movements and some of them will just be calisthenics, body weight movements. And I don't even have a name for them. They're just Phil Jesse, Phil Jesse movements. Um, the objective is to connect um, back to me. So it's that mind-body connection. Get back on track. Set the foundation before I embark on more fitness challenges. And I'm going to start to introduce the pull-ups. Um, slowly but surely and get back into my routine because the last thing that I want to do is go to that pull-up bar and every time I go there feel that nagging pain and then train through it because if I don't have to do that if I don't have to do that and I can recover and I can come through this then that would be my choice that would be my preference and that's why I've made this decision okay Thank you so much for staying with me on this journey. I'm going to share everything on the vlog series so you will see it all. So whatever you're doing, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. I'll see you very soon.